And next we have Paul Moulton from Isle of Man Television. Good afternoon, Paul. Fast am I. Good afternoon, Chief Minister. I would like to look at the timeline now because this is very important because uh, Claire Barber did an interview with me today saying that you knew on Tuesday about these cases, yet you didn't release information until about 7.15 on Wednesday night. And this followed me and many others were, by that stage, had fairly good feedback from people that there was something going on. Can you confirm that this is the case, that you knew on Tuesday what was going on? I'll let David answer that one. Yeah, <coughs> um, I'll bring the Director of Public Health on in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. But, Paul, from my point of view, when tests come back, it's not just the tests, we then do the contact tracing. Information isn't released on cases until we have done the contact tracing because we need to know where the person's been. Um, we need to know who's been associated with that person. This is no different to any other situation we've had throughout the pandemic. We announce cases as and when they become um, available to be announced, and that is precisely what we've done. They have been they have been timed in line with our release schedule when we do the updates. Sorry, do, did you know on Tuesday or not? Um, I didn't. Um, I can confirm I was not aware of the cases until Did yesterday. somebody know on Tuesday? I will bring the Director of Public Health in in case she has any further information on the timelines. Yes, um, this depends on the reporting time from the lab, which wasn't until late evening. And by the time the contact tracers were working on it, we were into the very late evening. And we reached the point of sort of 10 o'clock and later when it was too late to finish off the contact tracing. So that's why it was completed the next morning. Obviously, those that could be completed on the evening were, but it wasn't possible to complete them all. And therefore, the whole picture wasn't known. How obvi however, obviously, those who were identified were immediately self-isolated and tests were arranged for the following day. So there was nothing of any public use or interest to release at that point, I would okay. say. Okay, when on Wednesday morning did you f complete your tests? The tests weren't completed on Wednesday morning, but the contact tracing was, and then obviously people have to book through and get the tests. The point about that being, of course, is that people have been taken out of the community through self-isolation before they have the tests, so the risk to others is already mitigated at that point. And again, that's not something that the public actually need to be made aware of in terms of it being useful information for them. But don't you think the public should have known before? Well, it's not for you to answer this one, it's for uh, uh, the politicians. Should they not have been informed before 7.15 yesterday evening when it was clearly running on all social media platforms everywhere that something was up? Well, what was up, Paul, is that we had a, a number of cases of, of COVID-19. It wasn't um, from the definition being transmitted around the, the community. Um, it, it was um, being traced back to someone who travelled off island and, and therefore tests were having to be made. We, we have to go along with the advice of our medics on, on when to release the information. It's not something politicians should ever get involved in. As to, you know, we certainly don't hold back on information from the public. When we can provide the information, we do so. But a number of tests have to be made and, and checks have to be made to, to verify the information. I don't, David, if you want to add yeah, anything yeah, to that. Yeah, if, if I could, Chief Minister, this goes back to the answer I, I just gave Alex before. It's important we have full picture information when we release things because otherwise it just generates more questions. If we just put out we've got another two cases and then we can't say anything whatsoever so around contact tracing, which may still be being verified, testing that is still underway, um, then it doesn't add anything. If anything, it just causes more confusion. So it is important that we have the full picture before we start announcing things. So particularly the announcement we've made the, today, we needed to have that information so we could be confident of what was happening within that cluster before we come out in order to be able to reassure, attempt to reassure. Okay, because I, I, I put down it was in the community, then it, you got, we got an email at 7.15 saying it wasn't in the, a community infection and all that. And now today, the Chief Minister, you have basically, I don't think it's an apology, but you have basically regretted what you said, maybe, or as a, as a group, that it basically all... Basically no, no, you, you took, you've got it wrong, Paul. The, w, the World Health Organization rules on what is a community spread is where you have a case, which they had in Guernsey, where they did not know where that case had come from. So therefore, it's not under the um, definition about the World Health Organization and what hundreds of countries use that definition, it is not a community spread infection. But it was a, a, an infection as a result, we knew straight away it tied back to someone who had traveled and therefore it didn't meet the criteria 
But we were just try I'm just trying to be helpful and say, yes, someone has caught COVID on the Isle of Man from another person. Now, it doesn't meet with the compliance, uh, with the phraseology of what the World Health Organization used, but we've just tried to be clear to people what's happened. Someone has traveled back to the island, someone has been infected as a result of that. We've done the test and we can trace straight away where that person has got COVID-19 from. In the Guernsey case, they didn't. They just did a, a, a routine test and found it, and that person had no history or even connection with someone who'd travelled. It's, it's a clear difference. We've just tried to be helpful in our explanation. But some will say you're splitting hairs. I mean, like someone said, it's like a lawyer paying out. You go through the fine print. It wasn't quite in the community, but in all effectiveness, it, it was. Can you not see that some people want you to be totally as, as, as transparent as you keep saying you want to be, but this doesn't do you any favour sometimes when you seem to be holding back? I'm sorry, but that's how it looks to some people. Well, it may look to you, Paul, but I, I have made it clear in, in my opening speech, and you know, if you want to listen to it again, do so, where I, where I said, whilst the World Health Organisation definition is um, means we have that we haven't got it in the community, really, in, in my opinion, we, we, we do have... Um, a case of on-island transmission of the virus. So I'm just trying to be as helpful as possible, not hiding anything and, and being clear. If you choose to perceive that as, uh, you know, different, then that's, that's, that's for you to decide.